it's a great pleasure to speak at Nottingham uh, Algebra Geometry Seminar. So uh, I want to talk about some recent work uh, joined with uh, six authors, <laughs> uh, Kenny Asher, Dory Bailery, Harold Bloom, Christine De Fleming, Giovanni Inchiostro, and Xiao Wei Wang. Um, so we initiate a, a study of a certain kind of Calabria pair, which we call boundary polarized Calabria pair. And I will first start with the background and then try to, oops, try to um, uh, explain why we care about this and uh, what did we prove. So first of all, uh, let's look at the motivation. So uh, from the classification of varieties, um, we know that every uh, variety uh, is built from uh, three fundamental types. So we have the uh, so-called final varieties that are uh, Kx negative. And we have uh, so-called Calabria varieties that are Kx zero. And we have uh, general type varieties. and that are Kx positive. So uh, by built from, I just mean that every variety can be uh, written as a tower of fibrations, such that every fiber and eventually the base is one of the three types. So this is uh, you know, basically a, a picture of the minimum model program. So uh, in algebra geometry, we care about uh, uh, modular spaces, which are more like a finer structure of classification. So therefore for each, it makes sense to first focus on each of the three fundamental types. And uh, for final, we have the so-called K moduli theory, which is uh, uh, accomplished uh, in recent years. And, and that um, is based on the theory of K stability. And for general type varieties, we have the so-called uh, Collard, Schaeffer, Barron, um, Alexeyev uh, theory. So this is uh, generalizing uh, the so-called dudley Mumford uh, moduli of curves. And for Calabria varieties, there are many approaches, uh, but also uh, it's unclear what's the best one and uh, which approach would work for uh, all Calabria varieties. So, for example, you can have a uh, approach using GIT, you can have approach using Hodge theory, you can have approach using mirror symmetry, uh, blah, blah, blah. So, and differential geometry, there's really uh, a lot of different approach and they are related to each other, but also not quite the same. So uh, what our approach uh, basis is, uh, is sort of inspired by uh, case stability and also the KSBA theory, uh, but more intrinsic. And you will see uh, what what do I mean by more intrinsic uh, because um, recently there has been work by especially by uh, Bjorka on constructing uh, log Calabria modularized spaces, but uh, his modularized spaces are usually in our viewpoint is usually not the canonical one because he need to choose some extra uh, data, for example, a polarizing divisor, uh, and then he need to make the pair into a KSBA pair. Um, 
so in that case, you lose some of the objects. Anyway, um, so our objects, we, we study so-called boundary polarized uh, uh, Calabria pairs. So let me first explain what are boundary polarized Calabria pairs. So it consists of uh, a variety X and the divisor D. Uh, so here by boundary polarized, I just mean that D is ample. Uh, uh, maybe let's say Q divisor, Q cartier, Q divisor. But for simplicity, you can assume D is a cartier divisor, that's okay. Uh, and also, mm, so here we assume D is positive. And then um, by KBL pair, I just mean that KX plus D is Q linearly trivial. Okay, in particular, this implies that uh, um, the X is a final variety because minus KX is ample. Okay, and then uh, we need uh, some conditional singularities. So let, let's just uh, maybe talk about it later. But uh, first we want to say singularities are mild. So <laughs> in general, we will use the so-called SLC condition, but uh, you will see later that in the, in the more like precise definition. Uh, so it could be KLT, it could be LC, or it could be SLC. And the last one is this, uh, is the main objects we want to construct a modulized space. Okay, good. So. Uh, why do we care about uh, these pairs rather than uh, copy of varieties themselves? Um, so we want to look at some examples uh, just to connect uh, with with the usual copy of varieties. So first, uh, you can uh, take P2 and together with the cubic curve. And in some sense, this can be viewed as a, as a modular space of a cubic curves them themselves because the embedding is more or less uh, canonical. Mm. And then uh, you have P2 uh, with one half of a curve of degree six. So here you can see my D is a genuine a Q divisor. And uh, by taking double cover, you obtain a K3 surface of degree two. So in some sense, modular of K3 of degree two can be transformed into modular of this pair because this uh, double cover structure is actually uh, intrinsic because if you think about polarized K3, that, such that the polarization is a line bound of degree two, then the linear system will precisely map the K3 surface to P2. In other words, the linear system is uh, base point free, but not very ample. Um, so somehow this P2 will have this, uh, this structure of a uh, boundary polarized Calabria pair is equivalent to a K3 surface of degree two. And similarly, we can talk about uh, uh, P3 together with a quartic surface. So this gives us a, okay, so the first give us a elliptic curve. And usually we can just look at a forgetful map of the X and just focus on D if D is reduced. So then this is K3 of degree four. And for K3 surface, there's a series of examples going up to degree 22, um, such that you, you can just look at the K3 surface that are you know, anti-canonical divisors in a final threefold. So, then the, uh, this example is uh, more interesting. It's studied a lot in mirror symmetry. So we can take quintic threefolds embedded in P4 and we consider this as a pair. So all of these examples are, their axis are very nice. You can see actually even smooth, but more generally uh, there is this very simple construction. So if I have uh, a polarized Calabria variety. So let's say V comma L. Uh, here V is Calabria, L is polarization. Then uh, we can take X 
to be uh, the projective cone over V with polarization L. And then uh, D we can take to be the section at infinity. So then this, uh, by, by doing so, uh, we basically introduced a, a so-called boundary polarized Calabi up here. So we will use BPCY uh, to just uh, shorten. So this means boundary polarized uh, Calabi pairs. Yeah. OK, so therefore, um, you can see that somehow to study moduli of a polarized Calabi L is not so far from studying uh, boundary polarized Calabi L pairs. Because every polarized Calabi L pair, uh, sorry, every polarized Calabi L variety has this natural projective cone construction, which is a funnel, and the section at infinity is this anti canonical device. Okay, um, good. So then the the next we want to raise this question, which uh, at beginning is is some sort of vague. So the vague question is uh, is is that can we say that uh, can we find a compact moduli uh, for the pair X D maybe moduli? Let me say moduli space for now. Um, that is canonical in some sense. So here canonical uh, just means that we want uh, several things. So, so first we want uh, some natural uh, singularity conditions. And and second, we want uh, the following. So this is uh, a little bit harder to satisfy. For example, it fails for many moduli space constructed by uh, using like KSBA methods such as pure class moduli space. So if you look at the Hodge line bundle, so the Hodge line bundle uh, is is defined in a way that if you look at okay, maybe I explain later. Uh, so we want the Hodge line bundle to be ample. So what is the Hodge line bundle? Roughly speaking, uh, if you look at a family, let's say X comma D, uh, so these are like family over a base, let's call it B, then the Hodge line bundle uh, is defined in the sense that if I pull back the Hodge line bundle on the base, then I get K curly X over B plus D. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with this so-called canonical bundle formula in uh, birational geometry, then the Hodge line bundle is precisely the modular part, the, the modular part of the uh, you know canonical bundle formula. And uh, in some sense, it's just a, a line bundle that detects the variation of a complex structure in the fibers. So if a Hodge line bundle is trivial, then it more or less says that the family of Calabi pairs is isotrivial. So all the fibers should be the same. Okay, so usually this condition of Hodge line bundle is very difficult to, to satisfy. Um, and then a more precise question uh, goes as follows. Um, so can we build uh, a modular space Which I call M C Y uh, that connects the following two modular spaces. So I have M K, which is a, a specific K moduli. So this is the K moduli of X, uh, and then I just shrink the coefficient a little bit. And by shrinking the coefficient, I get a log final pair. So therefore, I can talk about K moduli. And the other one, you can imagine, I'm just going to uh, increase the coefficient a little bit. 
So I call this KSBA moduli of uh, x1 plus epsilon d uh, such that basically I have a wall crossing diagram. So I, I start from mk and I can go to mcy and then mcy also admits a map from mksba. So in some sense, this modular space serves as a, a model in the wall crossing from the log funnel side to the log general type side. Yeah, so this is a, a more precise question. Okay. Any questions? Okay. So here I have a question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So what exactly do you mean by by these arrows? I mean, what kind of things are these objects are different, right? They are. Um, that's true. So, um, somehow what I, what we try to do is uh, is on the stack level. You imagine that the MCY is larger. So it, maybe I, I'll write on next page. So on the left you yeah. have Artemis stacks, right? Yes. So so somehow if you imagine this is my K moduli stack, and then this is my KSBA stack. So they should admit an open immersion into this Calabial stack. So the Calabial stack should contain both uh, K, K semi-stable objects for coefficient one minus epsilon and KSBA stable objects for coefficient one plus epsilon, but maybe something more. So usually, usually this is not the equal to the union. So you cannot just take the union yeah, on exactly. both sides. Yeah. So you have to include something more. Um, and then, if there's a good moduli space uh, map, so mm -hmm. then you can you can have this. Uh, so this is this is on the level of good moduli okay. space. So then you you can have this. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so again, this is only a conjecture, more or less, and uh, we can only verify a special case, but uh, we hope that uh, such a space exists uh, eventually, maybe not from directly from the construction we had. Okay, good. So so then let's uh, talk about what is the, the moduli stack we, we look like. So. So here we only consider uh, so the objects we consider are boundary polarized uh, pairs uh, x d. So this is boundary polarized Calabial uh, pair uh, such that the singularity is good uh, is S L C. So S L C just means semi long canonical, and this is a condition. That shows up in the in the K moduli and the KSBA as well. So if you uh, remember, uh, so in K moduli, uh, I require that x one minus epsilon d should be KLT, and this implies that x comma d is L is so called LC block canonical. And here I'm using some some kind of ACC uh, of the log canonical threshold. And similarly, in the KSBA moduli, uh, I have x1 plus epsilon d is SLC. And that implies, I'm just shrinking the coefficient now. That implies xd is also SLC. So then you can see that uh, once I assume SLC singularities on the boundary polarized KBL, then both K module, both K semi-stable pairs and KSBA stable pairs, they are contained in the BPCY, you know, in this op, in this uh, objects that we we consider. Okay, so then uh, the family of uh, of such pairs is basically, uh, you know, mimicking what we have for the KSBA stability. So so we just consider X F X D to B, and then uh, 
such that uh, first f is a projective flat uh, with uh, you know SLC fibers of uh, dimension so very pure dimension n and then two uh, we want to say d is a, a relative so here I, I actually have a, a stronger assumption here I think we want to assume that d is a, a relative uh, Q cut here, Q divisor over B. Um, and then uh, three is this uh, Calabial assumption. Uh, so I have K X over B plus D. So this is Q linearly and also over B trivial. And then we want D to be ample over B. Oh, sorry, this should really be curly D here. Yeah, so uh, this is the condition. And uh, maybe for we want some kind of uh, call out condition in case you are working over uh, arbitrary base. Let's say call out conditions. So if my B is a normal base or a smooth base, then I think one, two, three should be enough. Yeah, so this uh, family's uh, you know, definition is, uh, is just borrowing from what we had for a KSBA stability. Okay, so then, um, of course, we need to fix some uh, numerical invariant to have a suitable moduli functor. So, so we also fix, uh, let's say, the volume of uh, x fibers so which are x i write as as xb and uh, the degree of db or in other words the coefficient set um so then then we get a a moduli functor Which I just call uh, curly MCY. So certainly there are some extra, you know, this volume and degree thing uh, and dim dimension should be encoded here, but I'm just want to be uh, loose on that. And you can imagine whenever I write uh, MCY, I just mean I fix those invariants. So there should really be, uh, you know, some subscript like N, V, and maybe D here, degree D. Anyway, so I will ignore those. So then the first theorem we show uh, goes as follows. So we, we just show that you can construct such a MCY as an arting stack. Uh, which is locally of a finite type uh, with affine diagonal. So here, locally, our finite type is important because uh, we cannot show, and it's it's actually not true that uh, MCY is bounded. So usually, MCY is not bounded, uh, and that's that's like a main challenge. So we will see later that it, even in the simplest example, P two is not bounded. So usually, uh, MCY is not bounded. Yeah, so for not bounded objects, uh, it's very hard to talk about modular space. Um, still, we want to at least look at some examples and see if we can really build a modular space. So, so to build a, a separated modular space, at least for bounded arting stack, you will need the following uh, two criteria, um, which are called S completeness and theta reductivity. So let me just state the theorem and explain what they are talking about. Oh, by the way, this is this is the the work A B B D I L W. Yeah. So this this is what we prove. 
Um, so the second theorem we show that the, this Kabyal stack satisfies uh, as completeness and uh, theta uh, reductivity. Uh, moreover, it satis satisfies uh, the evaluative criterion. Let's say the existence part of the evaluative criterion for proxies. So, what does S complete and zero reductivity mean? Well, so what's going on is you can imagine that uh, let's say my B is a curve. Um, so if so here we explain what 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 is as complete. So let's say B is a pointed curve contains a, a, a point zero. And we have two families. So we have X D over B. And we also have this X prime, D prime over B. So these are two families such that they're actually uh, birational to each other. And their, their birational map is actually isomorphic over the punctured curve. Uh, so in other words, XD restricts to B minus zero is isomorphic to X prime D prime restrict to B minus zero. So in other words, you have uh, the same family over the puncture curve. And then you will potentially, you would have different limits at this point. So if the stack is separated, this will not happen. So every uh, isomorphism over the puncture curve can be extended to the entire curve. But uh, the, moduli, the moduli stack here is in general, usually not separated. And we already see this for K moduli. So this is not a new phenomena. But then what S complete means is just, uh, okay, so here I'm, I'm just stating a, a more like a rough version. It's not really the precise version. So then there exist um, test configurations. Um, so from X zero, D zero degenerates to a common thing, which I call it uh, um, maybe I call it a Y comma delta. And certainly my X prime zero, D prime zero also degenerates to, to the same thing. So this is a test configuration uh, such that this pair Y delta is also SLC uh, boundary polarized Calabria. Yeah, so in some sense, this is saying that up to test configurations, uh, the moduli functor is separated. So, so we can define the following. So um, it's called the S equivalence. So we say two pairs, let's say X D and uh, X prime D prime. So these are SLC a boundary polarized Calabria pairs. And uh, we say they are S equivalent if I can find uh, test configurations uh, such that my XD degenerates to Y delta and then also X prime D prime degenerates to Y delta. So this is precisely the same formulation as we saw in the earlier slide. Okay, so uh, it takes some time to show that, uh, that the S equivalence is really an equivalence relation. And somehow if you prove S completeness, this is like a corollary. Um, yeah, so in some sense, you, you can think about it this way. So in in case stability or GIT, uh, the semi-stable locus is usually have more points than the than the polystable uh, 
quotient. So if you want to form a moduli space, you need to collapse a, a lot of the semi-stable locus into a single point as long as they are S equivalent. So therefore, you, you want to construct a moduli space, you better identify the objects under this S equivalence relation, and then you know, hope to build a moduli space. So that's what we did for the for an example, uh, which is the case of uh, P2. Okay, so theta relativity has a similar flavor. It's more about uh, degeneration of a uh, test configuration along a curve. But I will not talk much on that. Um, okay, so, so next we want to build moduli space. And the idea is uh, goes as follows. So we consider the objects uh, P2 with a plane curve of degree D, and then we add a coefficient three over D to make it a log Calab L. So this is a boundary polarized Calab L. And then uh, we want to uh, look at its various compatifications. So certainly we start from uh, the K moduli, which is the the K moduli stack of uh, P two three over D minus epsilon times C C T. So this pair now is log funnel, and I can talk about K moduli. And on the other hand, I have the so called K S B A moduli, which I denote by P D H because uh, it's studied by hacking. So I just increase the coefficient. And uh, from the general theory, we know that PDK and PDH, they are both bounded. And uh, there are arting, the arting stacks. And moreover, uh, this PDH is actually a a, a Delimonfort stack. Yeah. Okay. So then, in order to build uh, this Calabial moduli space, we first look at the stack. So we call this uh, PDCY, and that's the closure of this P two uh, three over DCD. Uh, of this locus in the the BPCY uh, moduli stack. So previously in theorem one, we, we already showed that uh, there exists such an arting stack uh, which parameterizes all of the uh, boundary polarized Calabial with certain numerical invariants, and then it could have many, many components, right? So we, we look at the, the main component or let's say irreducible component where uh, in the interior, it parameterizes P2 uh, with a plane curve of degree D. And then I take the closure. So in other words, I'm looking at all the possible degenerations of P2 with a plane curve uh, whose degeneration is still a boundary polarized Calabial and is still SLC. Okay, good. So. So then um, immediately we, we see this, that uh, the PDCY is unbounded if uh, three divides D. And how do we see that? Well, um, this is a, a very well-known example. Mm, so we know that P2 admits uh, a lot of degeneration to the so-called Manetti surfaces. And this also shows up in mirror symmetry. So uh, I'm just taking a weighted projected space, P A square, B square, C square, satisfying the equation, uh, so-called Markov equation. So this Markov equation has infinite many uh, integer solutions. And they are connected by mutation into a, a infinite tree. Okay, so for any such uh, degeneration, uh, we can look at the so-called uh, toric boundary on, 
on the weighted projective space. So let's call it uh, uh, D uh, toric. And then if you put in the toric boundary, you can actually always smooth it out um, to P2. And you can make sure to smooth it out so that CT is a, so this is a family of smooth cubic curves. So the reason here is, is you can show that uh, that this, this total family, so let's say this, my total family is X and then over maybe a base B, so general fiber is P2, uh, special fiber is, uh, is this weighted projective space. So then you can use a uh, so-called uh, Kamata Vivek vanishing. Because the singularities of the weighted projective space is KLT. So Kamata Vivek vanishing applies and you can show that the push forward, let's call it pi, you can show that the push forward of the of the anti-canonical um, so so here I really want to take the anti-canonical in the reflexive sense. So you, you can show that this is flat. Because the higher uh, cohomology or higher push forward vanishes due to Kamata Vivek. So therefore, if I have a flat uh, vector bundle, a flat shift over B is a vector bundle. And then, you know, if you look at the sections, so therefore, if uh, you look at the sections H0 of uh, P2 uh, minus KP2, and it degenerates to uh, H0 of P A square B square C square and minus K of that. So this degeneration is flat. In other words, whenever I choose a, a, a boundary divisor in the anti-canonical of the weighted projective space, I can sort of deform it out to a general uh, anti-canonical divisor on P2. So that's why I can find a family of smooth cubic curves such that this pair degenerates to this uh, you know, toric pair. So the toric pair here certainly is SLC boundary polarized KBL, right? Because toric pairs uh, are automatically log canonical even. So this is even better log canonical. Yeah, and it's, just, it's even so-called Q DLTs, quotient of DLT pairs. So, so therefore you see that because my Markov equation has so many uh, solutions, right? It has infinite many solutions. There's no way I can put all of the magnetic surfaces into one bounded stack because for instance, their index will not be bounded. Um, so therefore this shows that uh, even for D equals three is not bounded. Yeah, so the conclusion here is PD three is not, oh, sorry. I want to say P three one is unbounded. Okay, any questions? Right, so even more, uh, you can build examples of P2 with uh, the boundary, uh, the toric boundary of P2, which is a triangle that degenerates uh, through test configurations to arbitrarily long or arbitrarily many uh, irreducible components in a so-called a stable toric variety. So this is a, a consequence of of toric degenerations. Um, so not only the index of uh, these degenerations are unbounded, the number of irreducible components in the BPCY limits could be arbitrarily large. So there's no way we can we can have a bounded uh, stack from from just considering everything. Okay, so then uh, what we prove, um, despite of this uh, challenge, uh, is that uh, is there exists a projective 
uh, scheme and indeed a variety uh, which I call Roman PDCY uh, parameterizes as equivalence classes. of uh, points in this unbounded stack. Moreover, uh, we have birational morphisms uh, from, from P, D, K. So this is a K modular space uh, to the Calabria modular space. And then on the other side, I have the KSBA modular space. Um, and uh, if you look at the Hodge line bundle on the Calabria modular space is ample. So in some sense, you can think about this as a, as a kind of a generalization of belly Borel uh, compatification, or let's say belly Borel type uh, compatification. Okay, um, so that's our uh, main theorem for the you know, general construction of the moduli space. Any questions? Yeah, maybe I can ad address uh, the example here. So, so for this example, you can actually show that uh, P2 uh, CT, they will also degenerate to P2, uh, this triangle. And then from the S completeness theorem, you can show that uh, P2 with the toric boundary uh, and uh, P2 with this, uh, uh, sorry, the magnetic surface with the toric boundary, they are S equivalent. So therefore, although you see this infinite points that goes deeper and deeper, uh, they are not bounded. In the modular space, they are the same point. So somehow we're just identifying a lot of things, even unbounded uh, sublocus into uh, some bounded sub right or even a point. So in this case, um, if you are so-called type three, that means the minimal LC center is a point. We, we show that they always collapse to a single point in this uh, PDCY stack. So therefore, uh, the moduli space turns out to be bounded and uh, it's minimal in the sense that we're collapsing a lot of things so that you can make the Hodge line bundle ample. So on both sides, the Hodge line bundle will be semi-ample. This implies that lambda Hodge is uh, semi-ample on uh, K moduli and also the KSBA moduli. And this is a conjecture before. Uh, I think that this conjecture is uh, usually uh, related to the so-called Prokhorov, Shokhorov, uh, B semi amponis conjecture. Okay, good. So uh, let's look at some examples before we talk about the proof. Okay, so an example. So here we think about the case D equals six. So in this case, uh, you know, it's equivalent to study P2 with a sectic curve to um, study of case three surface of degree two. So let's just look at what the S equivalence look like. Um, so we take P2 and then we take a, a special configuration of a degree six curve. Okay, so my drawing is not so precise, but you can imagine I'm taking three conics tangent at uh, two common points. Okay, and then it turns out that you can construct a test configuration that degenerates this to the so-called uh, gluing of two uh, quadric cones. So this is uh, P112 on each side. So P112 union P112 along a line. Okay, and then the curve will degenerate to the following configuration. So 
So you see that this uh, tangency, to, uh, the, the two tangency points, they are still survives in the degeneration, but they separate on two different uh, irreducible components. And then my curve, each, each component, each irreducible component here is a conic, it degenerates to two uh, sections of P112. And turns out this guy here is, is a so-called polystable point. And uh, another uh, configuration in P2 is the following. Uh, so we take a double conic. Okay, I'm just going to draw a conic twice. And together, intersecting with another conic at four points. So then the degeneration here we get is the so-called P114. Just using the conic as a degeneration. So then uh, turns out this double conic became the double section at infinity in P114, thinking as a cone. And then uh, this other conic degenerates to four lines through the vertex. And somehow this pair is not uh, is not polystable, but it's close to polystable. So if you really want a polystable pair, you need to blow up uh, this section at infinity and then glue with a Hertzberg surface. And then your curve will become something like this. So on the top, we have uh, the so-called uh, Hertzberg surface F4. And on the bottom, we have P114. And they are glued. This should be four. Yeah, they're glued in this fashion. So then in the end, this guy is polystable. Okay, so uh, somehow the degenerations I, I draw here, they are so-called type two degenerations. That means that uh, the minimal LC center uh, has dimension one in a DLT modification. So, this is not the deepest degeneration. The deepest degeneration is so-called type three. And that's uh, this magnetic surface example is type three degeneration. So what's interesting here is that for type two degeneration, you can see some interesting moduli. For example, uh, on the top, you see that there's a P112 together with sort of three sections on each component. And these three sections, if you mark their their points together with the vertex, then you see that this is like a four points on P1. So there is a, a non-trivial moduli of one dimension. And uh, on the bottom uh, picture, you have four points on P1, right? You have this four intersection points on this double conic. And this is again, giving you some non-trivial moduli in the type two locus. So all of them are kind of uh, giving you a so-called one cusp, which is a modular curve, parameterizing elliptic curves. Uh, and for type three degeneration, it turns out every type three degeneration are equivalent, are S equivalent. So you, you only get one point. Okay. So uh, finally, let me uh, briefly say the idea of proof. And uh, I will focus on uh, on theorem three, which is uh, the construction of moduli space for P2 with a plane curve. So what did we do is we try to uh, first consider a, a bounded subset. So this is called PDM. So the definition is very uh, intuitive. You just take all the a boundary polarized Calabria pairs such that the index of Kx at every point is bounded above by this M for every every point. So then um, it's not hard to show 
that this PDM is bounded. So you, then you can think about PDCY as a limit of PDM. And certainly, um, in order to construct modular space, it's, it's enough if we can construct a modular space of PDM and show that it stabilizes as M go to infinity. Uh, but the challenge here is to show that a PDM admits a good modular space. Um, so we got stuck for quite a while, and uh, eventually we realized that uh, that using using complements, uh, we can sort of uh, translate uh, this this question uh, to the case of d equals three. So here I'm I'm not gonna say too much detail on this, but this is really the key observation. So, so in other words, if we want to show something is as complete, for example, then you have a pair of x comma d over a punctured surface, and then you try to fill in uh, the punctured surface into a pointed surface, and you can always do that in this bigger stack PDCY, but there's no guarantee that this this extra fiber you add in still satisfy the index bound. So that's that's the most tricky part. And then what we did is we replaced the divisor D by a so-called one complement. And this can be always chosen because we have a good understanding of the geometry of the degenerations. Uh, and then after you replace the divisor D by a one complement, then it always come from a degeneration of the elliptic curve in P2. So therefore we, we sort of translate the question to, to the case D equals three. And then over there is a more like a question about elliptic curves. So then we use uh, the so-called uh, twisted, twisted in the sense of stacks, uh, elliptic curves. Uh, and uh, their deformation theory. So this is uh, studied by Martin Olsen. Uh, and then using those, you can sort of see that the index of a of the surface containing the elliptic curve is equal to the index of the the polarization, or, or let's say the Q polarization of the normal bundle restricted to the elliptic curve. And then this this sort of uh, you know index is also represented as the the so-called inertia the size of the inertia stack of a so-called twisted elliptic curve. And uh, because this is a curve question, everything is explicit and you can write down um, the local coordinates, even for stack, you know, it's a quotient stack locally. So um, it's, not, it's not so difficult to figure out that, uh, that S completeness and theta relativity holds for this twisted elliptic curves. Uh, so then, uh, we show that uh, this PDM, which are good modular space of curly PDM, stabilizes uh, as uh, m go to infinity. And then there's some extra argument uh, uh, to show the Hodge line bundle is ample. So here we mostly just use the the positivity uh, method by Kala, Ambro, and uh, Fujino Gongyou. Yeah. Um, so everything is based on so. Um, The, the explicit geometry of uh, degeneration of P2.
Yeah, so we really wish to generalize to other Del Paso surfaces. And uh, it seems that uh, the one complement uh, trick does not always work. So we have to really uh, do something else. And it's uh, it's still, uh, we, we're still not, not fully sure that uh, you can do this. I mean, we're, we're confident that you can do this, but we, we haven't fully proved it that uh, for Del Paso surface, you can, you can do similar things. And in higher dimensions, I think the situation is very unclear. Okay, so uh, let me stop here. Thank you very much.